Okay, back to stage one. Just going to be using down stabs and back attacks to kill these guys really quickly. That down stab does 16 damage. This back attack does 12. And most of the enemies on this level have only 16 health, so those two attacks are very powerful. A down stab will one shot most of these guys. And a normal sword attack, just for reference, will only do two damage, so they really are very strong attacks to use. Um, difficulty with a down stab is that the enemies will dodge out of the way most of the time. Trick you can use to avoid that though is the enemies always dodge downwards, so you can just go to the bottom of the screen and they can't dodge any further down, so your down stab will always land. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm trying to use some speedrun strategies, but if they go wrong, I'll just go to the bottom of the screen like that. So those two enemies at the end there, the Bad Brothers, they only have 32 health, so only two down stabs to finish them off. And that's the end of stage one. Stage two, we can start making use of the pits. Um, capture card going a bit crazy. Hopefully it'll sort itself out. There we go. Um, as long as the enemies go in the pit, uh, you get double points. So you can bait enemies in the pit if you want to, like that. We'll always do a charge attack once they get to a certain range from you, so you can abuse that as much as you want. Remember to attack the villagers, as is the tradition. And I'm not going to get on this dragon. It doesn't actually do very much damage at all, and its attacks are very slow as well, so it would just leave me vulnerable safer to just stick to the back attack. Even though the back attack has its own problems, it's uh, needlessly precise. You have to press attack and jump together on the same frame, but the game runs at 60 frames a second, so you can often misfire that. So almost forgot to give this skeleton a bit of a walk around. He's the first skeleton that you come across, and skeletons and some of the other enemies in the game, you have to if you want to get points, you have to give them a bit of a run around, uh, give them a chance to attack you, otherwise you wouldn't get any points. Don't know why it works like that, it's just the way it is. At the end of that level, that was also the only red dragon that you see in the game, so might as well make use of it while I have the chance. It's also the only Bizarian, or Mount, however you want to call them, that has a projectile in the game. Because it can breathe fire across the screen with a fireball. Um, so I'm going to knock as many things into the pit as I can on this level. Again, I don't want to get on this dragon, so I'm going to try and avoid that. Okay, everything's gone in the pit, so that should be okay. I'm going to knock this thief in the pit as well. That's just for speed. You don't get any points for killing thieves. You can just wait for them to go away if you wanted to, but it takes a long time, so much quicker to either knock them in a pit or hit them enough time so that all of their magic potions have fallen out of their bag, and then they'll just run away. Okay, these next two guys um, cannot be knocked in a pit, otherwise you won't get any points. Okay, messed up my strategy. Worked out. You need to give those guys a bit of a run around as well, otherwise you don't get points. And this Silver Knight as well. I can't just finish him with the last down stab there, I need to give him a bit of a run around. And I'm just going to stick as close to his uh, horizontal position as I can, just to bait that shield, uh, shield barge attack. He's got a much worse, longer range uh, attack with his sword that he can do, which is much harder to dodge, so as long as you keep close to him you can avoid that. Okay, so on to stage 4. This one works a little bit differently. You don't get any points if you knock an enemy in the pit. So I won't be doing that. Again, no idea why it works like that. It's just the way that it is. And this stage also has lots and lots of skeletons, so I'll be doing the skeleton dance to bait some attacks out of them to make sure I get points.
The easiest way to do that is to just uh, move up the screen and then hold the down button and they'll have a swipe at you as you walk past. Reasonably safe. And I'm also making sure I don't go too far right so that I don't spawn multiple skeletons at once because I don't want to have to deal with that unless I have to. I am going to get two skeletons at once at the end of this uh, level, but if I can avoid it, I'm not going to attempt fate. Don't mind spawning all of these grey guys in at once, uh, they're less threatening. I mean, they can still very easily and, uh, take a hit at you with a shoulder barge attack if you're not paying attention. Attack off of this guy, and then the last pack of the level. It was a bit too early, that down stab. Okay, I didn't want him to do that shoulder barge, so that's messed up the positioning a little bit. I think it should be okay though. And that's the end of level 4. So good to get that bit out of the way. I'm deliberately not picking up the magic, not just because I'm not intending to use it, but also the more magic you pick up and the more magic you go into a camp with, the more the thieves will steal off you, so it just saves a little bit of time. So hopefully everything is going to go in the pit in this level. You do get points, or double points this time. Just using that down stab there, because the enemies always dodge down, they don't check if they're going to dodge down into a pit, so that's another thing you can do. knocking everything into that pit on the left. Okay. And that's a little bit of a precise setup, so good to get that. And can't finish those guys off quickly, need to give them a bit of a run around. That's a bit of a dangerous bit, so happy that that's gone well. So stage six, this is where the arcade version of the game would end. I'm playing on the Genesis, so um, we get two extra stages. Move up the screen a bit, don't want that guy on the left to shoulder barge me. And then we can catch this guy. Okay, these two skeletons can cause me problems, so hopefully they behave. Okay, and then I'm just going to abuse the AI. Um, one of the three enemies on the screen, only two of them can ever actually engage you. And also this boss on my left, uh, Death Adder, he can't leave the screen. So he can't surround me on the left hand side, so I can just use that to my advantage to get some reasonably safe downstabs against those two skeletons. And then I can finish him off with downstabs. It's actually a pretty easy boss when you know this trick. If you just go to the bottom of the screen and spam these downstabs, he stands up really slow can't knock him off the side of the screen so you can just stun lock him in. That is the end of stage 6. So this next stage is definitely the hardest stage of the whole game for this particular challenge. Gold Knights at the end in particular are pretty difficult to deal with without getting hit. So again, knocking as many things in the pit as I possibly can. Okay, yeah, just going to be very cautious here, try not to spawn in too many of these guys at once. Okay, and then lots of magic here. There must be a boss battle coming up. Oh, 
Okay, so these are the two gold knights. Um, this bit's really tricky, so just kind of concentrate. one down that makes things much much easier cool okay so just the fight with Deathbringer to go easier said than done though so I don't have to kill these skeletons as long as they've taken a swipe at me, this should all work. Nice, that should be it. You can actually kill those skeletons, um, they have 255 health, which is just about double what Deathbringer at the end has. Um, but you don't need to kill them to get the points. Um, so yeah, that looks like I've done a no-hit max score run without using magic, but it's not over yet. Um, the game is very finicky, it may have just decided not to give me the maximum amount of points, so I have to wait until the end of this extremely long credits to find out whether I've passed or not, so hopefully I'll get there, hopefully you've enjoyed the run so far. Feel free to skip the next seven or eight minutes if you want to go straight to the score, assuming that it's worked out and I actually upload this. Um, yeah, quite a long credits, you get all of these extra stats about the enemies. I'm not sure they all make sense, I think some of them are a little, a little bit made up. For example, the skeletons only get a Attack B, move B, which is um, feels like they're selling the skeletons a little bit short, shall I say, because they're one of the most difficult enemies to deal with in the game. Um, yeah, I'm using uh, Tiris for this run just because I'm quite used to using her from speedruns. She's the fastest character to speedrun the game with just because she has the most magic she can get to stage 6 and use the dragon magic, whereas the other characters can only get to stage 5 and 4 respectively. Um, and also Tiris has uh, her attack and jump attack does that spinning back attack the same as Axe Battler, and that's um, more useful in close quarters than the rolling ground attack that Gilius the Dwarf gets. It is useful in its own ways, but um, I think Tiris is um, Probably the, the best character to use for any kind of challenge in, in Golden Axe, just because she's, you know, got that powerful magic and that back attack is fairly useful. Yeah, I think this um, run mostly went to plan. Um, I do have a route for it. I've tested it out on an emulator, just watching, um, watching in the background the score going up. You can't see it when you're playing on a real cartridge like I have done now. Uh, so I've hopefully figured out a way to get the maximum score, but as I said, I won't know until we get to the end of this credits. So most of these enemies are actually named after various types of beer and vodka. I'm not sure why, I think someone had a bit of a laugh at that. That chicken leg there that we saw on some of the earlier stages, I think is from Altered Beast. It was an enemy in that game. I had no idea why they included it in this game, and no idea why it's called a chicken leg. It does not look like a chicken, it does not look like a leg. It's pretty creepy. <laughs> and the dragons that we barely got to use. Um, those thieves. I always feel like they're a bit too smug about themselves, those thieves. Um, they're a bit of a pain for speedrunning. They're the only sort of random factor that comes into it. And of course the villagers that we have to attack. I always thought that they were children when I used to play this game when I was younger, but it says here that they're villagers, even if they are extremely small. Death Adder Jr. you don't actually see in uh, the arcade 
version of the game. So I've been playing on arcade mode, which is the hardest mode that you can play on the Genesis. There is a beginner mode, but that ends after stage three and you fight Death Jr. Death Adder is the guy that we faced on stage six, and that is where the arcade version of the game would end. Arcade version of the game's also got its own funky credits, so I recommend going and checking it out if you're not already familiar. I won't spoil it for you, but it's very different to this. So, uh, question mark on Tyrus's weight, you'll have to imagine that yourself. Of course I couldn't ask it because that's incredibly rude. The King and Princess of Euria, which is the land that Golden Axe is set in. Um, they are the owners, I think, of the Golden Axe, which was stolen by Death Adder. I think he intended to destroy it to crush the morale of the land, but fortunately we have defeated him. Now we get to watch the actual credits, um, all the names of the people involved in the Genesis version of the game, and there's quite a few of them. Not as many as you'd get in a, a modern day game, so they can scroll through them extremely slowly. I'm impressed by how much they managed to do for this game. It was released in, I think, 1989. Um, one of the first games released for the Mega Drive or the Genesis, depending where you're from. Um, so they probably didn't have as much expertise on the system as people did with later games, but it's a pretty rock solid game and it does have its glitches and especially the uh, score calculator is a bit wonky, but for the most part it's a rock solid game and you know it hasn't been broken too badly over the years by people trying very hard, so um, definitely one of the best Mega Drive games in my opinion. You may disagree, feel free to comment what your favourite um, Genesis or Mega Drive game is. I think maybe Streets of Rage is up there for me as well. I think Streets of Rage was actually built on the same engine as Golden Axe, so after Golden Axe had been finished they handed over the source code to the Streets of Rage team and they built on it to make the first Streets of Rage game, which is why some of the mechanics are quite similar. There hasn't been a Golden Axe game released in quite a while. There was three Golden Axe games for the Mega Drive. Um, yeah, this was a no-hit run uh, Herb Chief, and fingers crossed it's also a max score run, so I'm trying to do no-hit, maximum possible score, and no magic. So, just about to find out if I got the maximum score. Fingers crossed it's going to be 445, I think? Total score. And I think that's it. So 445 strength, 415, so that is the max score you can get. So finally, long last, this challenge is done. I can move on to something else. I'd like to say I'll, I'll try a different game, but I probably won't. <laughs> I like this game too much, so I'll find something else to do. But yeah, that is challenge done.